yeah, Psalms 27, verses 13 and 14. Verse 13 says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I had, verse 13 says, I had fainted. I had, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Uh, I want to preach this morning. God kept me from fainting. God kept me from fainting. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, to be pure and holy, to be tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary just for you. Heavenly Father, your people need to hear a word from you. So move every obstacle and move every hindrance. Allow us to focus on you and on you alone. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise on this morning. God, have your way now. Dwell with us tabernacle with us show us your glory in jesus name amen god kept me from fainting saints it's been um yet another week uh, another week of struggle another week filled with anxiety and and frankly runaway emotions um um and I don't know what you do when you're when you're at your breaking point, when you're struggling and you're filled with anxiety. Uh, but for me, I find comfort in the word of God, specifically the Psalms. Psalms are songs that are meant to encourage us, bless us mm, and help create an atmosphere right right there where we are. Yeah. One of the wonderful things about music, and, 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 and that, that's why I appreciate what Ashley does for us so much, because it, it helps set an atmosphere um, where we can give God praise and we can reflect on his goodness and his mercy. And so when I'm struggling, I turn to Psalms. Right from the jump in Psalms 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth uh, uh, in the way of sinners, nor seateth in the seat of the scornful. In Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. In Psalms 42, as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul uh, longs after thee. My my soul thirsteth for God, the 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 living the the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? In Psalms forty six, you discover that God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we shall not fear. And 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 though 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 the earth be removed and and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea and though the waters thereof uh, roar and be troubled and though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a city. Yeah, the, 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 the city of, there is a city, the city of God. Even when I've messed up, I turn to Psalm 51 and declare, create in me, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not from thy, thy presence and don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Psalms 121, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. All of my help comes 
from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Psalms 139, uh, will, where shall I go from thy presence? And where shall I, uh, from thy spirit? And where shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, uh, thou art there. And if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and, 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 and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, uh, thy hand shall lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, uh, the, even the night is light about you. I will praise thee. And this might not be nobody else's testimony, but I praise thee because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Ah, and my soul knoweth it right well. If you've known me for any length of time, you know that one of my favorite psalms, dare I say my favorite scriptures in, in the Bible, is Psalms 27. I love Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and foes, uh, uh, came upon me to devour my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, uh, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, this in this will I be confident. One thing I've desired of the Lord that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord uh, uh, all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple for, for this, this is my part, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. Whew. Yeah. In his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me and he shall set me up Maybe y'all ain't never had no enemies. Maybe, maybe maybe that don't move you, but 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 I suggest to you, if you've been saved for any length of time, uh, Psalms 27 ought to be your jam. But I get so excited about the the first part. The he's my light and my salvation, and and my enemy stumbled and fell. I, I get so excited about the first part that sometimes I miss the blessing that comes in the later part. David says, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. There's some confusion as to when David wrote this. Some think it was before he became king. Some think it's immediately after he became king uh, and he had first gotten on the throne and he wrote this as they were going to get the Ark of the Covenant. Some think that he wrote this when he was in a battle and he had passed out and the mighty men had to come and save him. Uh, some think he wrote it while he was dealing with some drama with his chilling. Uh, but whenever it is that he wrote it, it blesses me. All I know is the text said, David said, I almost fainted. And I don't know what David was dealing with, but, but, but this week, I almost fainted. The, the climate of the country is stressing me. The, the, the rising COVID numbers are concerning me. People walking around here mask free, like we're not dealing with a pandemic, is irking me. Watching lynchings and, 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 and violence and murder against young black men every week is overwhelming and triggering me. And although we weren't close, when I heard uh, uh, Minister Lisa Ber Berhannon had passed away, it got to me. And I almost fainted. Is there anybody on the feed that can relate to I almost passed out? Now, as somebody that used to like to fight, I can tell you that, that, that the blow that knocks you down, the blow that knocks you out, the, the blow that, the blow that, 
that 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 makes you that makes you go to sleep is the punch that you don't see coming. And in this year of vision, I didn't see this coming. I didn't see a global pandemic that would have us staying at home for three months. I, I didn't see I didn't see violence in the streets to this degree. I, 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 I knew I've seen the police brutality and we've had a long problem with the police, but I, I ain't see this coming. And it knocked me for a loop. Is there any on the feed that can admit life can throw you some stuff that you did not see coming? Family drama will make you pass out. Depression and, and mental health struggles will make you pass out. Carrying around trauma and stress in your body will make you faint. Uh, a sickness will make you faint. Just watching them stick that Q-tip in the people's brains make me want to faint. But here's my shout. Despite the best tricks of the enemy, I didn't faint. Despite everything that's been thrown at us, we didn't faint. Uh, despite the news and the fake news, we didn't faint. Uh, uh, despite the sins of my past, I didn't faint. Despite fake allies and racist tweets and, and racist comments, I did not faint. Despite everything going on and everything I did wrong and, and, and everything that's going on in the environment, I didn't faint. Is there anybody on the feed that can just thank God that I didn't faint? I believe the Holy Spirit has brought us online because there's a principle uh, that we need to hear and hear clearly. Here it is. It, I know this ain't deep. I, I, I know it's not. I, I know it's not real deep and, and real theological. Here it is. God kept us from fainting. While others were waiting for you to pass out, God kept you. While, while others were plotting on you, God kept you. While others were planning on you, God kept you. While others were cheering you on to fall down, God kept you. I wish I had five people on the feed that could encourage me and say, God kept me. God said, it wouldn't be. I said, God kept me from fainting. God saw me about to lose my mind up in here, up in here, and God kept me. And that alone ought to make you shout that God kept you. That no matter where I am, God kept me. No matter, no, no matter what I've been experiencing, God kept me. That means that God saw me in my mess. God saw me weebling and wobbling. And God stopped me from passing out. God grabbed me and he held me and stopped me from passing out. God sees you in your mess. God sees your tears. God sees your broken heart. God sees your pain. God sees your hurt. God sees your struggle. The fact is, God saw me and kept me from passing out. I believe there's three things in specific that kept me from passing out. Number one, I believe God. I believe God. Whew. No matter what the popular people may have to say, I believe God. I don't just believe God because Gene and Sandy raised me in church. I, I, I don't just believe God because I'm a preacher. I don't just believe God, catch this, because I'm trying to get into heaven. But I believe God because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is real to me. God gave my life meaning and purpose. I had breath, I had a heartbeat, but I didn't have life. I was just existing. I was going through the motions. I thought I was happy. I thought I was having a good time. I thought I knew what I was doing. I, I, I thought I knew what I was doing. But, but, but God saved me 
from destroying my life. Yeah. God saved me from me. And I know you've heard me say this before, and you may get tired of me saying it, but God saved me from my own crazy thoughts. God saved me from my own sinful habits. God saved me from my own destructive desires. God saved me from my own nasty issues. Can I get five people to type, God saved me? My biggest issue was not a bottle. My biggest issue wasn't weed. It, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't crack. It wasn't, it wasn't Molly. Uh, uh, my biggest issue was me. And God saved me from me. I believe in God because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt what God has done for me. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt it was God that saved. I was reckless, but he saved me. I, I wasn't worth saving, but he saved me. Uh, I, I, I know my truth. I'd be dead and in my grave, but God saved me. He is the one that held me together when my world was falling apart. He's the one uh, that kept me from suicide when, when death looked easier than life. He's the one that kept me when my son died. He's, he's the one that kept my marriage together. He's the one that provided for me when I couldn't provide for myself. He, I, I should have had AIDS, but, but he held back disease. I, I could have had a heart attack, but, but he let me live. He, he's the one that gave me another chance. He's the one that gave me joy in the midst of sorrow. He is the one that saved my wretched life. And if I never preach again, he's still my God. And he's still worthy of all the praise. If I never get back to Turner, if I never make it back in the building, I still owe God my best praise because God saved me. I say all of that to say this. That did not happen when I got to heaven, because I ain't there. That I'm seeing God and I believe God for what he's done while I'm still right here on earth. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to get to heaven. Uh, I, I, I'm going to get my two wings to veil my face and two wings to veil my feet and two wings to fly away. I can't wait to see the streets paved with gold. I, I can't wait. I, they can't crown him until I get there. I, I want to be there when they put the crown on it. But, but, but I can't just serve God for heaven. I need to see God right here on earth. And I'm grateful that in my flesh, he's healed me. In my flesh, he's healed my mind. In my flesh, he's restoring my soul and giving me peace daily. He delivered me from depression. He broke generational curses that were plaguing me. He brought me out of trauma. And before I get to heaven, he's already given me eternal life. If he turned, if he gave you life, can you type that? He gave me life. I didn't faint. Because I believed that God is going to work this thing out. My belief and my trust in God has sustained me when I was living the upside down. My faith in God kept me when the money ran out. My belief in God blessed me when everybody else bailed on me. And when I was on the brink and had nothing else, my belief in God kept me sane. Hymnologist said, Sister Tamika, that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground, sinking sand. I didn't faint because I believe. Grandmama said it this way. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. I didn't faint because I believe God. Number two, 
I waited for God. I, I, I waited. I waited for God. And I'll be honest, I don't like to wait. I told y'all a couple weeks ago, Amazon Prime is my bomb move because I don't want to wait for my stuff. I want it the next day. Uh, amen. Um, I, 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 I'm not a, I don't like waiting in lines. If I'm in the grocery store and the line is too long, first thing to come in my mind is we just going to leave this car. We're going to go to another store. <laughs> yeah. But I waited on God. Now, when I say wait on God, some of us take that too literally and we act like we sat down and waited on God like we was waiting on the Amazon man. Um, they told us to wait on the Lord that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait, I say on the Lord. But if you're faithful... And they told us that if we were faithful and, and just waited on God, God would bring it to us. And your faith is proven uh, by how long uh, you can wait on God. And even right now, there's some people, some believers who believe that we shouldn't protest and that we shouldn't, we shouldn't rebel against the system, that we should just trust God and wait on him to stop systemic racism and lynchings and police brutality. That's not the God that I know. No. Nah. Get me different than them. Uh, the God that I serve told Isaiah, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, and plead the widow's cause. The God that I serve told Amos, let judgment roll down as waters and righteousness as a mighty, as a mighty stream. Um, um. I don't think God intended for us to, to sit down on our hands and do nothing. In fact, um, can y'all hear me? In fact, the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Yeah. Faith without works is dead. And so how did God, uh, waiting for God, keep me from fainting? Um, if God acted every time we called him, then we would call the shots and God would not be in control. Uh, having to wait on God causes us to trust him and to trust in his timing. But hear me good. Waiting on God does not mean doing nothing. No. Waiting on God, God expects you to pray. While I'm waiting, I'm reading his word. While I'm waiting, I'm warring in the spirit. While I'm waiting, I'm protesting injustice. While I'm waiting, I'm speaking truth to power. While I'm waiting, I'm fighting like hell against, against a, a, a tyrannical government. While I'm waiting, I'm doing ministry. While I'm waiting, I'm worshiping. While I'm waiting, uh, I'm trying to fight the good fight. While I'm waiting, I'm teaching my children how to fight the system. While I'm waiting, I'm fighting and I'm warring at the same time. I'm waiting on God, but I'm fighting as I wait. Do I got any on the feed who can pray? fight and wait we wait on the lord to act to to answer our prayers to make a way out of nowhere to do what only god can do we wait on him because he's god and we are not we wait on him uh, uh because waiting on god is good for us but as we wait on god he changes us he heals us he perfects us he's working on us yeah that while I'm waiting, God is working. 
while I'm praying, God is working. Uh, 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 while I'm praying, uh, uh, God is working. While I'm protesting, God is working. While I'm voting, God is working. While I'm holding uh, politicians accountable, uh, God is God is working. While I'm worshiping, God is working. Is there anybody? When I look back over my life, even when I thought I was waiting on God, God was already working it out for my good. Is there anybody on the feed that can testify with me? I was waiting, but God was working. I didn't faint because I waited on God. And while I was waiting on him, I was warring in the spirit. You just can't wait. You got to watch as well as pray. There are the, your actions are to indicate that you believe that God is going to do this thing for you. I didn't faint because I believe God. I didn't faint because I waited on God. And I didn't faint because God strengthened me. It's right there in the text. I, I, I know this ain't deep, but God gave me strength. And God didn't just give me strength for my sake. He made me strong for his sake. For he makes you strong so that you can serve him, so that you can follow him, uh, so that you can be a blessing to other people. God strengthens us for the fight that is up ahead. Deliver me from people who think they made it on their own strength. Life is cruel and can be unfair. This is a mean and sin-sick world. Uh, I can't testify for you, but I can only talk about me. I'd have given up and thrown in the towel, but God gave me strength. When I couldn't make it, God gave me strength. When people talked about me, God gave me strength. When friends drained my strength, God gave me more strength. When injustice took my breath away and I couldn't breathe, God gave me some strength. I need 10 people to type, God gave me strength. The problem is that God gives us strength in ways that we don't interpret as helping us. In other words, since God rules and super rules, that God does some stuff that's not pleasurable to you. When you're trying to get strong in the weight room, uh, uh, they put more weight on the bar and you got to lift this bar. And the more you lift this bar, the stronger your muscles get because they, they're repeatedly lifting this heavy weight. I'm trying to tell you that sometimes God puts weight on you to strengthen you. Uh, he, he may have to break your heart to teach you how to love him. He may have to allow sickness to allow you to focus on him. He may let trouble come so he can teach you some patience. You might have to lose some possessions so you can serve him only. God might have to break you so he can remake you. God might make you cry so you can hasten to his throne. God is making me stronger. God will take what the enemy did to hurt you and use it to bless you. God will take your own mistakes and bless you with them. God will take your shortcomings and use it to strengthen you. Is there anybody in the feed that you have Marvin Sapp's testimony that now I'm better, I'm stronger, I'm wiser. I may not have understood what was going on then, but God was working it out. For my good. I don't know who I'm talking to, but that breakup you went through was necessary. That breakdown you had, it was necessary. That setback was necessary. That set up was necessary. That rejection was necessary. That heartbreak, it was necessary. What you thought was hurting you, God was using it to bless you and strengthen you. 
It was necessary because it taught you how to pray. It was necessary because it taught you how to tarry. It was necessary because it taught you that when you lost everything, you found God. It was necessary because when you're weak, God will be strong for you. David says, I almost fainted. Then he says, but God strengthened my heart. I wish I had a couple of witnesses. You almost fainted when she walked away, but God strengthened your heart. You almost fainted when he lost his mind, but God strengthened your heart. You almost fainted when you started wearing a mask, but God strengthened your heart. You almost fainted when you lost your job, but God strengthened your heart. You almost fainted when your child called you from jail, but God strengthened your heart. You almost fainted when they said it was cancer, but God strengthened strengthened your heart. You almost fainted when you saw the video, but God strengthened your heart. You almost fainted when they lynched another black man in Atlanta, but, but God gave you strength and strengthened your heart. Come on, Kirk Carr. Help me close this sermon. I almost let go. I felt like I just couldn't take life anymore. Oh, oh y'all ain't saying nothing. Depression weighed me down. But God held me close so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me. I was right on the edge of a breakthrough and couldn't see. The devil really had me. But Jesus came and grabbed me and he held me close so I wouldn't let go. Here's my testimony. I'm here today. Because God kept me. I'm, I'm alive today only because of his grace. He kept me. God kept me so I wouldn't let go. Richard Smallwood said, Lord, I lift my eyes to the hills knowing my help comes from you. Your peace that you give to me in times of the storm. And I wish I had five people to help me close. You are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. I lift my hands in total praise. I lift my hands in total praise to you. I'm here today only because God kept me. Ashley, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you, Lord, more, more than anything.